Welcome to Zoom In, Zoom Out, your global look at news from Taiwan and around the region. India and Taiwan have actively been pursuing closer economic ties, most notably with the announcement of a labor agreement that seeks to ease Taiwan's labor shortage by bringing in Indian migrant workers. Today, for a special episode, we're speaking with two Indian experts about warming India-Taiwan relations. But before we hear from our guests, let's first take a look at how trade and investment between the two countries have developed over the years. Joy Sung has this report from May 2023. Information and communications tech. Those are some of Taiwan's top exports. One of the largest markets for these products is India, now the world's most populous country after surpassing China earlier this year. As Washington and Beijing's battle for chipped supremacy intensifies, numerous companies along the global supply chain are looking to mitigate risks, and the Indian market has emerged as a key opportunity. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been pushing the Made in India and Digital India campaigns, eyeing his country's own chip-making ecosystem. Taiwan currently dominates the global market for advanced chip manufacturing, Still, the two countries appear to be finding areas to work together economically. Though Taiwan and India do not share official diplomatic relations, trade between the two jumped 185 percent between 2006 and 2021. And last year, Taiwan's exports to India reached 5.3 billion U.S. dollars, a 17 percent rise from 2021 and the highest amount on record. And I think uh, we are in the most interesting time frame. And this 2023 will be written as a time for India-Taiwan investment push. That was Joyce Tsung for Taiwan Plus News. You can watch the full report on our website. Now let's go to our first guest. To better understand Taiwan and India's renewed focus on tech and labor collaborations today, I sat down with Debjani Ghosh. She's the president of India's largest high-tech industry association called NASCOM. She began her discussion by zooming in on the advantages of the labor agreement between Taiwan and India. Globally, um, the tech industry especially is facing tremendous talent shortage. And Confairy has come out with a report which says that by 2030, the world is going to be short of 85 million people. And if not addressed, it's going to result in a revenue loss of around $8.5 trillion. And then they have looked across sectors, et cetera, and pretty much whichever sector you look at, you will find that they are all being hit by the talent crisis, right? Now, in this kind of a scenario, I think global cooperation is an absolute must. It's the only way you can bridge the crisis. And by 2030, the only country which will have a surplus is India. So India and Taiwan's tech industries do have a history of collaboration. Um, you know, the most notable example uh, re recently is the team up between Tata and uh, Powerchip on uh, India's first commercial semiconductor fab. Uh, where else do we see Taiwan-India collaboration happening in recent years? Uh, Taiwan has tremendous expertise, proven success in hardware. India has tremendous expertise, proven success in software. The world of AI is breaking the silos and breaking the boundaries, and it's everything is now coming together. It's coming together to create end-to-end -end solutions, platforms. And I think the coming together of hardware, software, the orchestration of hardware and software coming together is going to be key. And I think this is a huge opportunity for both Taiwan and India to really strengthen how we work together strategically. Where do we collaborate? Where do, because this will apply to every single sector. It is not limited to one sector alone. This will apply to manufacturing. This will apply to healthcare. This will apply to banking. It will apply to every single sector. So NASCOM is India's largest tech uh, industry association, and it includes uh, members that uh, are from other countries as well. So currently, are there any members that are Taiwanese? Uh, we do have quite a few members that are Taiwanese. We absolutely have so many companies from Foxconn to Pegatron to so many of them that are Acer, Asus, that are present in India and doing very well. What is the organization's strategy for gaining more 
Taiwanese members and also more investment into India from Taiwan? So we have focused on three things. One, um, how do we ensure that India continues to be uh, the hub for digital talent for the world? That's job one. Um, in India, I think you will see the largest public-private partnership model for skilling. It's called Future Skills Prime. It's a partnership that NASCOM um, has with the government of India. And we bring in industry, government, and everyone to come together and train millions and millions of young Indians on frontier technologies by job roles. So whether it's cybersecurity, data analytics, robotics engineers, et cetera, et cetera, chip design. If we can continue to do this and we can continue to do this really well, then we are, we are pretty confident that India will always be a preferred destination for tech investments because tech business will go where the talent is. And we want to be the place where the talent is because we have the advantage of having a very young population, right? So that's, uh, that's literally job one for us. It's a huge focus area. Uh, second, in India, the collaboration between the different ecosystem players, it's an ecosystem. And that makes a big difference. So for example, we have companies, uh, large companies working with startups to accelerate their innovation journeys. And it's all about speed today. It's, it's not about how much you know, or you know, it's, it's all about how fast you can move. So how do you accelerate the innovation journey? And that's, a, that's another big focus. Um, and, and the third one for us is really working with government to ensure that India continues to stay the place where it's not just easiest to do business, but it's also easiest to innovate. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. Great. That was Debjani Ghosh, president of NASCOM, on Taiwan's tech and labor ties with India. Now, for our second guest on the show, we're going to zoom out to understand the larger bilateral trade and investment dynamics between Taiwan and India. Joining us next is Dr. Shamika Ravi, an economist and former Brookings India research director. I started by asking her about the possibility of Taipei and New Delhi signing a bilateral free trade agreement, one of Taiwan's key objectives. You know, we have, given the nature of the global economy right now, Jeremy, there is there are lots of uncertainties. And I think that is one of the reasons why country after country, and India is no exception, we are moving towards smaller agreements, bilateral agreements. And, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, a lot of the gains that we have made in the recent few years have been of that nature, that we are getting into agreements with individual countries, not big blocks as such, because they are just becoming unwieldy and there are lots of interests and, and uh, sometimes not extremely well aligned. So while that is still, uh, we do believe in the larger, um, uh, you know, order of being part of larger comprehensive treaties, etc. Uh, pragmatism, the need of the hour, the flexibility, as far as global trade and the shocks to global trade that you've seen require us to now get into these uh, bilateral agreements. And there is clearly an appetite. Of course, the elephant in the room is the geopolitics of the region and, of course, China. Right. So does this factor in at all in New Delhi's decision uh, on whether or not to move forward with more formal uh, trade arrangements with Taiwan? China is uh, a component that all economies today uh, look at and, and deal with. Uh, China has also been a huge contributor to a lot of uh, the change that you have seen in the last uh, few years. But given the nature of uh, the recent shocks, the supply chain just reorganizing and, and uh, countries looking to explore China plus one, India is no exception either. And in fact, we want to emerge as a likely uh, destination. Uh, for some of these businesses, uh, simply because, uh, you know, we as an economy, while we are fastest growing and we have remained so, we have a long way to catch up. So we are, in that sense, extremely ambitious. We, we want to do everything that uh, it will take for us to continue growing uh, in an inclusive, in a way that really uh, creates more jobs uh, and across the spectrum of industries and, and sectors. So not just industries, looking at services, we're looking at financial sectors, we're looking at uh, all others, if you look at tech and beyond, it's not just one or two uh, sectors. So I think in that sense, yes, China is very much a factor. But 
how countries overcome and, and how they align. I mean, we are seeing these kind of agreements unfold uh, across the globe because uh, countries are recalibrating and uh, India is therefore no exception. So trade between India and Taiwan has grown considerably, around 180 percent between 2006 and 2021. Yet the trade relationship is quite imbalanced. Um, Taiwan still exports much more than it imports from India. So what outside of more formal trade arrangements can the two countries do to kind of resolve this? This is where you begin to look at the whole spectrum of uh, sectors. And, uh, and of course, we are right now talking in theory in terms of we are to get into a trade agreement. Uh, what would be the nature of that? But it has to go beyond tech, though tech is a key driver. It is a key source of economic growth. It has been for 100 years. We, we know that. We are keen to collaborate on a lot of these. Uh, but I think human capital is, is another uh, very core strategic sector for us. If you consider that uh, our human capital, we do uh, have emerged. In fact, even uh, if you look at the last 20 years, we have emerged as a human resource center, uh, which is leading to uh, a very large number of doctors, engineers, caregivers across, again, the skill set, uh, moving to all parts of the world. Taipei and New Delhi have just signed an agreement to bring over uh, migrant workers from India. But the agreement has drawn concern from some quarters of the Taiwanese public. And Taiwan's labor minister did make some kind of racially charged comments recently about the agreement and the workers. What are your thoughts on, on these issues? Well, I think some degree of uncertainty and fear when economies open up, uh, particularly to people, uh, it's not unheard of, Jeremy. Uh, and yet, if you look at uh, Indian labor across the skill spec uh, spectrum of skill set, whether they are doing very high-end work, if you say that they're heading unicorns and, and, and maybe certain very extremely high-tech uh, part of the skill set, it could be semi-skilled, relatively unskilled, if you look at a very large number of migrants moving from India to the Middle East, for instance. Um, of course, the OECD draws far more skilled workforce. So today, in fact, when you look at the list of the, the biggest 40, 50 firms in the world, there is a very high chance that a majority of the, the CEOs or the CXOs are Indians. And I think a large part of it has to do with the fact that, you know, it's a reflection of the society as well. We're very diverse, we're very plural. So I think uh, uh, I understand the fear uh, because any economy that opens uh, to people from outside does have these fears. It's not the first time we are seeing it, but I, I, I'm not very worried about it because I think it's a matter of time. and, and uh, proof of the pudding when it comes to the economies, often in the eating. So when you see people come and work and assimilate, I think that just uh, works beautifully. Thank you so much for your insights, Dr. Ravi. Thank you, Jared. Thank you for the opportunity. That was Indian economist Shamika Ravi discussing India and Taiwan's warming economic ties. And this has been a special episode of Zoom In, Zoom Out. For more stories from Taiwan Plus, please follow us on social media. I'm Jeremy Olivier. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time. For more stories from Taiwan and around the world, download the Taiwan Plus app. In the face of adversity, the power of truth. A roadmap for a just and open world, charted by the freest country in Asia. Taiwan Plus. Taiwan Plus News, a voice of freedom in Asia.